Can you use soap on cast iron? Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to Garden Fork. I'm Eric Rocher, your host. Today, three cast iron seasoning myths, true or false. There's a lot of, well, there's over a hundred years of cast iron in America and handed down through the ages have been some practices, let's just call them. We're big on cast iron and garden fork. We have a couple other videos about it. Uh, one about how to re-season heavily damaged cast iron. One about how to repair heavily rusted cast iron and the best way to season cast iron hands down, I believe. Three videos, the links are below and at the end of the show. I love this stuff. It's, you know, bulletproof, rock solid, but there's a couple of things that people have handed down and say, oh, you gotta do this and you gotta do that. Let's talk about those. Myth number one, new pans are not nearly as good as old pans. False, pretty much false, okay? Old pans, because of the way they were cast and manufactured, have a very smooth surface. Newer pans have more kind of a pebbly surface here. Kind of hard to show in the video here, but you know, it has a little bit of a pebbly finish. If you season this properly, it's almost indistinguishable from the other stuff. If you want smooth old pans, you can buy them on eBay. We'll link below for a nice search for that. Um, or you can find them at yard sale, stuff like that. But buying a new one, season it yourself, you're just fine. Myth number two. Cast iron is non-stick. Yes and no. Uh, cast iron will never be as non-stick as say Teflon. I have a Teflon pan. I use it sparingly, um, but it is super non-stick. You can't use metal utensils on it. You can't overheat it too much. Um, if you chip it, you gotta get rid of it. And also it has a really thin base. Cast iron, when properly seasoned again, and we have a cool video about that, um, is almost as non-stick as Teflon. It's never gonna be like that. Um, I season mine, I'm really big about it, I paid all attention to it, and if I don't put enough oil or butter in my scrambled eggs, they stick, okay? Part of this is inspired by uh, some recent reading I've been doing. Uh, Kenji at Serious Eats talked about this recently, and earlier, um, probably like four years ago, Cheryl Cantor wrote in her blog about the best way to season cast iron. Finally, myth number three. Never use soap in your cast iron. False. I use soap on my cast iron and it is just fine. And here's why, all right? We're gonna get kind of geeky science about this, but I spent several football games researching this while I was watching the game. And here's what I've discovered. When you take oil and you put it in your pan and you heat up the oil in the pan, the oil chemically changes. It does a thing called polymerization. Big word right here. What polymerization does is it changes it from an oil to, depending on who you ask in the science world, either a glass-like substance or a plastic-like substance. But suffice to say, it's no longer an oil that is soluble by dish detergent, okay? Detergents like this, their jobs are to break up oils, float them off a pan and down the drain. When you season your cast iron, when you heat the oil, it polymerizes the oil, if done properly, of course, and it's no longer oil that is de designed to be broken down by this. The best oil to use is flax oil, and we have a video about that. And what I found is flax oil is the, a derivative of linseed oil. Flax oil is the edible food grade version of linseed oil. Linseed oil is bulletproof. It's used to preserve wood. We've ra made raised beds coated in linseed oil. It's used in oil paintings. You know those oil paintings from thousands of years ago? The oil paint has, well, maybe hundreds of years ago. The oil paint is based on linseed oil. Doesn't go anywhere. When, when linseed oil dries, it does a polymerization. It also, when it's heated, it does a polymerization. Here, it's no longer an oil that is dissolvable by soap. 